The official CBR dictionary defines power scaling as a method of determining a character's power relative to other characters in the series and the character's own progression. I kind of feel like I need to define this because a lot of anime tend to have trouble with it. Perhaps none more than Dragon Ball. The most iconic showdown in the entire Dragon Ball franchise is still the battle between Goku and Frieza. Despite the fact that it took about 20 episodes, the last section of the fight only lasted 5 minutes in world. And that is because Goku and Frieza were moving so dang quickly that the 5 minutes seemed like it was happening over several episodes. Which it was. This is a cool detail for this fight, but really messes up all the fights afterwards. For instance, the fight between Goku and Beerus features Goku achieving a power that surpasses Super Saiyan way more than Super Saiyan surpassed his base form. That means that according to the normal people observing Goku and Beerus' showdown, the entire fight should have lasted only a few seconds. Throughout the fight, though, the other Z fighters observe Beerus and Goku, seemingly in real time. Well, the CBR physics team, famous for figuring out how Inception's time dilation worked, did the math on the Battle of the Gods fight and determined definitively that it would have lasted 76 hours of sped up time. Maybe Goku and Beerus really did fight for days from their perspective, and we just saw a few minutes of it that we could proceed. I mean, surely Akira Toriyama used the standard time dilation equation to figure out the math, right? My personal favorite moment from Dragon Ball Z came when Frieza arrived on Earth, looking for some revenge. Instead, he found the new Saiyan who sliced him up like he was Sean Bean in pretty much any movie or TV show starring Sean Bean. While this was the coolest entrance in the entire franchise, in retrospect, it doesn't make a lot of sense. You see, the last time we saw Frieza, he was battling it out with Super Saiyan Goku in a tense blow-for-blow -blow battle. Frieza returns as a cyborg, who is apparently even more ridiculously powerful than he was before. So it's kind of ridiculous that Trunks, a first-level Super Saiyan, was able to destroy Frieza that easily. I mean, sure, he was likely still more powerful than Frieza, but not enough that fighting him took about the same amount of time as that Cyberman took to destroy Yamcha. And yes, we're still doing it. Well, my theory on this is that the scientists who rebuilt Frieza lied to him about how advanced the technology was that he was reconstructed with. Yes, Lord Frieza, you're way more powerful. Now, when you wake up, just ignore that Windows 98 logo that pops up. It's, it's, it's a feature, not a bug. The first few episodes of Dragon Ball Z proved that the new series was not messing around. It introduced Goku's big bro, who was not only an alien, but much more powerful than literally every other character in the series. He may have seemed super intimidating at the time, but as the show progresses, you kind of realize that Raditz is the biggest loser on the Frieza Force. Supposedly, he's a terrifying space pirate, but he's far weaker than both Vegeta or Nappa. If you run the numbers on it, Raditz was rocking a 1500 power level while Nappa had 4000, and Vegeta had a admirable 18,000. And it gets way worse when you look at the rest of Frieza's soldiers on Namek, who an even more powerful Vegeta was barely able to keep up with. In a rough environment where your co-workers frequently try to blow you up, it's kind of amazing that Raditz was able to make it to adulthood at all. I mean, how are Saiyans considered to be one of the most feared races in the galaxy when one-third of the remaining Saiyans is barely qualified to run the HR department of the Frieza Force? Now, despite the fact that Goku is clearly the main character, many fans think that Gohan is the one who has the most potential, and it's not hard to see why. There are a ton of times in the series where Gohan shows a ridiculous amount of power bubbling just beneath the surface. The first example of this was equal parts awesome and crazy. Gohan, in a fit of rage, managed to attack Raditz and actually do some real damage. He may not be the most impressive villain in the Frieza Force, but he was more powerful than literally every character from the Dragon Ball anime. That means that an untrained Gohan managed to leap over Dragon Ball era Goku's power level just because he was angry. That's both impressive and a little nonsensical. Not only that, but it really doesn't help with Raditz's street cred when he was punked by a baby. Jiren, unlike most Dragon Ball villains, is a pretty straightforward guy. He doesn't have a flair for the dramatic. He doesn't have some brutal sadistic streak. He doesn't care about competition or what constitutes a good battle. Jiren is a cold and efficient warrior who gets the job done, and seemingly takes little pleasure in it. 
So the Tournament of Power really doesn't make a lot of sense once it's revealed just how powerful Jiren is. Even when Goku managed to go Ultra Instinct, he still wasn't able to fully overpower him. So how did the tournament last that long? If Jiren was so powerful that even some of the gods of destruction were shook, then he probably would have been able to end the tournament in just a few seconds. He was so powerful that taking down everyone else wouldn't have really been a fight between warriors, as it would have just been one janitor sweeping up a mess. As far as the Pride Troopers go in his universe, Jiren is basically like Saitama compared to every other superhero in One Punch Man. I bet if we had a Jiren anime, it would be pretty much identical. Oh, oh, what if Saitama eventually grows up to become Jiren and it's actually the future of... Oh, no. Uh, regardless, they usually explain this away with characters like Goku or Frieza who hold back because of Goku's obsession with sportsmanship and Frieza's obsession with torturing every living creature like a kid burning ants with a magnifying glass. Jiren really doesn't seem like this kind of person. If anything, he would have likely have viewed the other contestants in the Tournament of Power as not worth his time. Finishing the entire thing in a matter of seconds would have been such an efficient time saver. That doesn't really give Goku the opportunity to master a cool new form, though, so I guess I can overlook it. In the original anime, Broly's ridiculous legendary Super Saiyan powers made sense. When he just had to go up against other Super Saiyans like Goku and Vegeta, it was perfectly reasonable that his Saiyan powers would overpower theirs. And then Dragon Ball Super decided to make our dreams come true by making Broly canon. Unfortunately, Goku and Vegeta were so powerful that in order to make Broly as formidable as he was in the original movie, he had to be scaled up to a ridiculous degree. In the official continuity, Broly was still a legendary Super Saiyan, but one so insanely powerful that he could overcome most deities, let alone other Saiyans. The fact that Broly was not only powerful enough to stand up against Vegeta and Goku in Super Saiyan Blue form, but they had to combine in order to take him down is crazy. No wonder the Saiyan scanner blew up when it tried to calculate Broly's power level potential. They calculated power levels in the thousands back then, and Broly's potential was likely in the billions, if not way higher. Gogeta had to smack Broly so hard that it broke reality itself. You just know that his power level is like Jeff Bezos' weekly paycheck levels of insane. Why would a genetic abnormality allow a being to become more powerful than the literal gods of that universe, though? It seems like something that would defy nature, even in the Dragon Ball universe. If one of those was born every thousand years, I'm pretty sure Beerus would have obliterated the Saiyans quite a long time ago. If that's not what the Gods of Destruction are for, then what's the point of having one? I think a rampaging berserker with seemingly unlimited power from a culture that is obsessed with conquering and destroying planets would be first on Beerus' destruction to-do list. And not that Beerus seems particularly good at his job. Rewatching the original Dragon Ball anime can be weird to experience in 2021. And that's not just because some of the Bulma jokes haven't aged all too well. Many of the villains and heroes are presented as if they are ridiculously powerful, even though we know that they're nothing compared to pretty much any character in the subsequent series. This is most apparent when you get to the Demon King Piccolo arc. The evil Piccolo is depicted as a monster on a cosmic scale. Before Majin Buu or the Gods of Destruction, King Piccolo seemed like the most powerful evil being in existence. Even when he regained his full power, Piccolo was likely rocking a power level in the low hundreds. While him not comparing to upper-level cosmic beings in the Dragon Ball pantheon would be understood, Understandable, it isn't when you think about the Namek Saga. It seems like Piccolo and Kami wouldn't have been able to win a street fight in any random Namekian village. Maybe that's why Kami really left. Demon King Piccolo may have been embarrassed to be defeated by a child in Dragon Ball, but it could have been much, much worse. Imagine if Piccolo decided to roll up on the planet Earth during Dragon Ball Super. He and his entire army probably could be wiped out by Yamcha and his freaking baseball team nowadays. Honestly, I'd love to see an episode where an original Dragon Ball-leveled villain tried to take over the Earth, only for a character like Yamcha or Mr. Satan to own them and save the world. I'm pretty sure I just pitched the exact plot of One Punch Man. Nobody tell Viz Media about this. Remember that one time Tien came out of nowhere in Dragon Ball Z and proved he was still relevant? Yeah, that's right, I'm talking about the legendary time Tien was able to hold off Imperfect Cell with a series of incredibly powerful tri-beams. 
While this is probably the coolest Tien moment of the entire series, it really doesn't make any sense. According to my Reddit research, Tien isn't using any chi to draw the energy, but rather his own life force. This is why it looked like he kicked himself in the stomach every time he used it. While that's all well and good, why didn't he use it before? The entire Android saga could have been ended if Tien just pulled out his massively OP move on the much weaker androids. If he was able to hold off in perfect cell, imagine what it would have done to Android 19. These fighters really need to stop waiting until the most dramatic moment to pull out their super moves. The Cell Saga is widely regarded as one of the best arcs in the franchise, and I agree. That being said, have you ever sat down and tried to figure out exactly what Dr. Zero's plan was? No, seriously, take a few minutes with a pen and paper and see if you can figure out what in the world that old man thought was going to happen. So he created three androids, but was afraid of their power, so he created two weaker androids, one that was for his brain, and also created a biological android with the potential to be even more powerful than the powerful androids, but only if he ate them. Jero, my man, couldn't you have just had Cell consume Android 17 and 18 in the lab so he would be able to start out in his perfect form? I'm starting to see why the Red Ribbon Army fell apart. If your friends were like mine, they likely raged over that one moment in Dragon Ball Super that really didn't make any sense at all. That is, of course, the time where Krillin somehow took on a full Super Saiyan Blue Goku. Somehow, Krillin's Kamehameha was able to match up against Goku's while in Super Saiyan Blue. Even if Goku was holding back using 1% of his power, he should have blown Krillin away. They were likely just trying to hype up Krillin for the upcoming Tournament of Power, but it was one of the most unbelievable moments in the entire series. As we've covered here, that's saying something. For our next episode, we'll properly define fatherhood. Goku, if you're watching, you really need to pay attention.